standing in a eucalyptus forest in the central North Island. This is a eucalyptus nightens forest. Eucalyptus is an exotic plantation species in New Zealand. It's been imported here from Australia, but it now forms an important part of our diversified forest plantation estate. There's at least 14,000 hectares of eucalyptus nightens currently growing in New Zealand. Eucalyptus tortoise beetles, their scientific name is Peropsis charybdis, have been a pest of eucalypts growing in New Zealand for over a hundred years. The eucalyptus tortoise beetles overwinter as an adult. They come out of the ground or their shelter in the spring and start laying eggs. Now the larvae that hatch from those eggs, as well as the adult beetles themselves, feed on the new foliage of the eucalyptus. And this can lead to a condition known as witch's brooms, where the tree is having all its fresh growth stripped, leaving just the branchlets. If they create damage repeatedly, they can almost stop the growth of the eucalyptus trees and in really severe cases can even kill them. There are no native Peropsis beetles in New Zealand and therefore when they arrived here, there were just no natural enemies that had evolved to be able to attack it. So this, is, this enables populations of these eucalyptus tortoise beetles to grow at an alarming rate. What can we do about the eucalyptus tortoise beetle? Biological control using natural enemies to attack the beetles is one way to manage this pest. Biological control is one of the most sustainable methods of pest management that you can do. And it harnesses the power of natural enemies that have evolved with that pest to then control that pest in the new area. But to achieve this, we need to ensure that any biological control agents any natural enemies that we introduce to New Zealand are safe to have here. The first thing that we do is to locate a natural enemy. And for many years we've been working with the University of Tasmania. And we were lucky enough to study a parasitic wasp called Edia denarius that is very host specific and only attacks Peropsis beetles. And we decided to investigate it further. One of the important things to do is to look at how many other beetles that are closely related to Peropsis could be at risk in New Zealand if we introduced a parasitic wasp here. And there are beneficial beetles in New Zealand that have been introduced as weed biocontrol agents. So the two that are most closely related to Peropsis are the Tutsin leaf beetle and the broom leaf beetle. They're both in the same subfamily. So we were able to obtain populations of these beneficial beetles and bring them into the laboratory to test against the Edia parasitoid. And the good thing is that it didn't like them nearly as much as it liked Peropsis. Some native beetles we were concerned could be hosts to the Edia. The only native beetle that we managed to find for host testing was a species that fed on hebes in the subalpine areas of Kaharangi National Park. The Edia parasitoid did try sometimes to attack the native beetle, but it was not able to complete development within those larvae. This was a similar result for the Tutsin and the broom leaf beetles also. Some attacks resulted in a low percentage of larvae dying, but no parasitoids were able to complete development in them. After all the testing, it seems very unlikely that they'll attack anything other than the peropsine beetles that feed on eucalyptus leaves. We have already succeeded in introducing two parasitic wasps that attack the egg stage. These have been extremely useful, but at the moment there is nothing that attacks the larval stage of the peropsis life cycle, and that's what we know that Edia will do. The next step now is to apply to the Environmental Protection Authority for permission to release EDIA. We're undertaking pre-application consultation and are keen to hear from anyone with views on whether we should go ahead with this. I've been referring to EDIA as a wasp, but it's a parasitic wasp and it's not going to form colonies like German wasps do and they're so small they don't sting people either. It's unlikely that you'll see them because they'll be out in places like this, in eucalyptus forests, looking for peropsis beetles. 